afternoon. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is part two of my uh, storage heater video. Um, I have um, I have now installed the other video, but um, I just wanted to um, just go over the the importance of checking um, that your storage heater does not contain asbestos because if it does contain asbestos, well, I wouldn't even go anywhere near it. Um, I would get a specialist to do it. It's just not worth the risk. Um, I'm going to put uh, there is actually a comprehensive list um, in um, that is available that tells you about the storage heaters that do contain asbestos. Uh, the one I I I took out removed was a TRS model or a TRE Creda model, um, and so it's it's on the list as not containing asbestos. So that's why I was happy to do this uh, so when I put the when I've put the um, storage heater back in um, the thing about new storage heaters is you can't just swap it over with um, with the old supply new storage heaters need a secondary supply so they need an off-peak power supply so in this instance I had to create a spur off, uh, off, off of the ring main or the socket circuit it was quite a tricky one actually because it was um, at least eight meters, nine meters in fact, of trunking. Um, that had to go along the skirting up and then over and then around. I couldn't um, chase it or hide it in any other way because this property does not have RCT protection. So it had to be um, surface mounted um, and, uh, and as it's a fixed load, it had an FCU. If it had had, if, I had to, the customer wanted me to put an additional socket in, but I couldn't do that because they don't have RCD protection. That's another story. Uh, but yeah, so this one was um, an interesting job, but uh, yeah, this is how it went.